<clears throat> Welcome to the Rules Committee meeting. <clears throat> Call this meeting to order. Uh, John Crittenden, would you do the lesson? Father, I just uh, want to thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for the health that you've given us. And, um, just go with us as we do this important stuff here and uh, help us to get home safe. Help us to always be mindful that uh, all good things come from you. Um, mostly I want to thank you for Jesus. In his name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> thank you, Counselor. Roll call, Shelley. Sir, Joe Bird. Honey. Here. Honey. Honey. Here. Honey. Here. 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 I have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. Reports, uh, Marshall Shannon Buell. She is real right. This is not Shannon Buell. But Shannon is in Minnesota. I hope he makes it. His yes. son for his checkup after surgery. I'm Danny Tanner with Captain Marshall Service. I believe everybody has my report. If I can answer any questions, or I'll take them back to Shannon if I can. <coughs> Any questions for our marshal department? Yes, Councillor uh, Duncan. I'd just like to say thank you to uh, Philip Biles. Uh, yesterday, he took the pallet of water at Watts Community. He was having some uh, main line break in the water, so I appreciate that. He did it after hours. So okay. Appreciate it. Sure, passing on to him. Thank you. Anybody else? Do we have. Uh, Any uh, relations with the uh, the Marsh? There's a Marshall Museum going up in Fort Smith. Have we had a chance to visit that or see if, if for the for the authenticity of of what they're presenting there? I don't believe so. I think Shannon is aware of it. Um, I believe actually they have contacted him about some historical stuff, but I'll find out for sure. Okay, would you please? Sure. Will okay. Do. Thank you, sir. Yes, Councillor Walkenstead. Uh, we had a the a tornado that went went through Cherokee County. Uh, a few few months ago, uh, I had been <coughs> with your emergency management staff, and they said they was going to cover the cost for the, uh, the victims to be put up in a tinker lodge temporarily. And uh, anyways, uh, we're having a hard time to get them to uh, cover that bill. Can you check into that? I think it's like seven hundred dollars or something like that. I believe when I talked to Jeremy, that covered tribal members. I don't think it covered anybody else, but I will check and find out. So you guys are going to cover the tribal members that stayed in the I, Like I said, I'll find out. I'm not sure. Um, I know that was brought up in an EM meeting, but I will find out about that. If you would, please do. Sure will. Right. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Good report. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Office of the Attorney General. Good afternoon, I'm John Young, an Assistant Attorney General. I'm here for General Henry this afternoon. It's been a pretty uneventful month, Office of the Attorney General. Of course, we had the holiday break. And then, as with other departments, the government shut down, slowed us down quite a bit. We work a lot with our federal partners on a number of different things. Most of them were out of pocket. So it slowed down a lot of the work we've done over the past month. In addition to that, the Supreme Court, as you may already know, asked for additional briefing in the Carpenter versus, or Murphy versus Carpenter case. Uh, the court asked for additional briefing from the parties on some historic jurisdictional stuff. We participated in that briefing, and I think Ms. Qualls in our office has some info she could send you on that that we submitted in support of that. But um, other than that, not a whole lot going on with the Office of the Attorney General last month. Okay. <clears throat> That's probably a good thing. Any questions for Attorney General? Yes, Councilor Crittman. a question. Uh, Someone asked me, how many attorneys are in the Attorney General's office? Uh, there are six of us. Six attorneys? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
Okay, anybody else? Good report, John. Thank you. We have uh, <coughs> Gwen Terrapin is ill, but she do have her uh, report. So we'll ask questions later. Election Commission, Marcus Fears. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I wanted to recognize and thank the our staff, commissioners, all of our precinct workers, security, the uh, marshal service uh, for doing a great job on this uh, District 7 special election. For many of um, us, this was our first election, and I think that the team did a great job pulling together, and I was really proud of them. Um, so just wanted to recognize them first. Um, as of January 2nd, uh, 2019, there are 71,335 registered voters, 40,587 in district, and that leaves 30,748 at large. Um, lastly, I did just want to point out a few important dates uh, to remember. Next week is candidate filing, 4th through the 7th. That's uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, we'll need all of the voter registrations, changes of address, in before March the 20th or by the March 29th. That's the voter registration deadline. Absentee ballot requests must be to us on or before April the 19th. And um, we had had some questions uh, recently about can you turn both in? Can you turn the voter registration in with your absentee request? And absolutely, you sure can. So. I'll answer any questions if you have any. Yes, Councilor Critton. I've got some questions about the election commission. Do we do we want to do this now or in discussions later, Speaker? Um, There's a discussion you, only. See what. Okay. what let's go with it right now. Right. See what you got. All right, Marcus. Got a few few questions and concerns. Uh, I'd like to know. What, what do you think that, that would cause people who didn't request an absentee ballot or want an absentee ballot, what would cause them to have received one? Um, I don't really know how to answer uh, that question. Um, when the office gets a request uh, for an absentee ballot, we process that and send that out as far as, you know, who made that request how that came in. Um, there's a verification process that we do to make sure that they're a citizen and that they're registered to vote and then process that request. Um, you know, we're going to have some discussions later. And right. These are some things that concern all of us. Uh, and, you know, I know the Election Commission wants a transparent uh, you know, department there. And um, I had some concerns that um, I might want you to kind of look for, I don't know what could be done about it, but uh, a few different ones. It says they were presented with a registration, voter registration application, and attached was the absentee ballot request form. And one instance, a husband and wife discovered that because they were told to just fill out their registration on the back, just sign it. Well, the back happened to be the absentee uh, request form. So, you know, I've got a hint that that may be, uh, you might want to look out for people giving that impression of they have to sign the back page or something. And but that was just something that was brought to me. Um, and also, now, now we all get calls from different districts and <coughs> different people, but but uh, there was a worker who obviously has the book with the names in them. You know when people come to vote, they were noticing a lot that said uh, absentee. The person was absentee. Absentee requested. Right, had incomplete addresses, and you know it may just say Route One with no box number and anybody who's ever been in my neck of the woods route one you could spend a lot of time driving around through there so if if it's a complete 
incomplete address, you know, how would that person get there? <laughs> absentee. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to answer that uh, particular question, but we do have, you know, some bad addresses um, in our system that we try to that we try to clean up. We try to make contacts and, and get those addresses fixed um, as best we can on that. Uh, but I'm not sure exactly. Well, and Maybe we can do some research. And on I've that. had, <coughs> you know, I've got suspicions and that. You know, if you come around with the absentee request ballot form, um, you know, I've had folks say that they just hand them to them and say, just sign this. Yeah. We'll take care of the rest. Yeah. Now, and so my suspicions are that the reason their address is incomplete, that's not really relative. If I get it mailed, if I have that bottom one that says where to mail your ballot to, correct. But you guys, you guys check those forms to make sure they have a mailing address. Yes, yes, okay. we sure do. And so that that's a red flag if, if on their request form that's not a complete <laughs> mailing address, not just the bottom where to mail it to. Can I answer that a, your question? Yes. <clears throat> okay. When it says in the precinct signature book, incomplete address, mm -hmm. um, usually it is a rural route, but there are no um, directions. So yes, as you know, in Route 1, we might go for in and out two different districts. Um, we have to go by what was on their registration form whenever they registered. As you know, in Adair County, they are doing 911. The way our system works, if there is a complete street address, meaning 12345 South 575 right. Road. So in your books, let me ask you this when we're talking. In your books, if it says Route 1, incomplete address. Does not mean that they will not receive their mail. Shouldn't there be a Route 1 box something in your book? That's if they gave us that when they registered to vote. So the Route 1, now that's really not the physical address. Correct. The Correct. physical address is where they live. Exactly. Yeah. Whenever so we get so a if, route, you got, if you got a Route 1 with a box number, that's one thing. That's really not physical. No, it's but, not. But, it just, but a just a Route 1 with not even a box there is that is that considered an incomplete address it's considered an incomplete address because our system will not attach it to a street segment so what the happens street then? segments are aligned with your districts okay. what happens then if it is incomplete That's the reason do you go by the do you go by the the bottom we go by directions okay. we, we have to know I live uh, five miles west of the 51, uh, what's 50, 51, 59 highway on the east side. Right. Okay, that's going to give us a little bit better of a pinpoint uh, of where they actually are in what district. But like I said, we've got two counties in the 14 county jurisdiction that are not 911. Nowata County mm -hmm. and Adair County. Adair is in the process. So it'll be listed incomplete if they don't give the directions or they don't list a box number. So it's they, incomplete address. Yeah, you know, and it is, but it, it's, they're getting their mail. Mm -hmm. so a lot of them have PO boxes. So <clears throat> it doesn't matter what's in their physical. Mm -hmm. Their address that we are mailing to is their PO box. But as long as that where to be mailed to do you go ahead and mail those out if they have incomplete addresses? Yes, we do. As long as the where to be mailed, even me, the candidate? The, so the address itself can well, be incomplete all day, right? But it then, can, it can, as long as that bottom. That is just strictly in there. And what we are trying to do, it is, that is a training issue. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Okay, we train our precinct officials that if it says incomplete address next to their name, we give them a handout that says why we are asking for a new voter registration on you with a more current address. Okay. So we can get everything so updated. So we can get everything and correct, current yeah. and correct. Okay. I guess my question is if it's incomplete, does that say regardless of where to be mailed address, if that's complete, if they don't have a complete address up here, <coughs> they don't get an absentee? If they request an absentee, we will mail them an absentee. Even if their address up here is not correct? That has nothing to do with the mail. That is in our system. Well, it looks like we would want to verify their, their address. On the absentee application, has the address that they are registered at. Mm -hmm. If we get an absentee application and that address that they say they are registered at is different than what we have in our system, we send them a new voter registration in order to get it updated. Okay. Nine times out of 10, they have not <coughs> moved. Right. They have received their 911 address, especially in Ada County. Right. Right. Well, I appreciate so, that. And, we're trying and we're, to get those we, all right. And we've up talked about date. later on, and I've, and I'm sure everybody feels the same. I mean, we got something going right now, and things are as they are. And, but, you know, I'm, I've told people if, if uh, the good Lord sees fit that I'm going to be here again, that's going to be priority, and I'm sure it is for lots of us uh, to look because that. We shouldn't have to have that conversation. I mean, that it shouldn't be that complicated. I mean, put your ad, mailing address down there, mail it to you, mail it back, feed it to the machine. But you know, it exactly. it's just let us let us process it. Right. Make sure that you've done everything right. right on the affidavit. Then we put them all in there and we mail it. My next question is, what do voters have to show to be able to vote? Now, the reason I ask that question is I'm hearing that sometimes it varies, and I don't know, but is there something every time a Cherokee goes to vote in a Cherokee election, just black and white, you have to have this. Is it IDs, voter cards, both? I heard this time just a card would work. So I guess what is the rules that, like, when I go to vote this time? What do I need to have with me and everybody else? We're going to actually, she's actually going to look, look, look it up. There is, um, you can present, you can present an ID, you can present your voter card, you can present any kind of other government type of issued um, uh, identification. Okay. Subsection 12, precinct boards, d under C, duties, number one. Ensure that the identity of each person attempting to vote is established either through personal knowledge, either through, mm -hmm. either personal, through knowledge. personal knowledge, or photo ID, or by viewing some current form of government issued ID card or the voter's ID card issued by the Cherokee Nation Election Commission or other methods of identification. Okay, so there you go. So either one of those things will work. Yes. I recognize him that'll work, that'll work. Yes. and just just to close here um, oh okay now what do you count first absentee ballots or challenge ballots absentee ballots are scanned and not tabulated <laughs> until 7 p.m. or until we have finished processing them. So they are scanned. They are <coughs> scanned. <coughs> and until we cannot, we do not tabulate anything as far as the absentees until they have all been processed. Absentees. Absentees. That's okay. the male absentees. Okay. Let me ask you this. Absentee. Once you scan it, at that point, it's the secrecy envelope's been opened, right? Yes. Okay. At that, at that point, that 
once it's the secrecy ballot's been open, it's not traceable, right? Back to me. Correct. No. Okay. Let me ask you this scenario. Okay. I've got people who showed up at the polls. I didn't want this absentee ballot. Don't know where I got it. I want to walk in and vote, watch it go in that machine. What's their only option? Challenge ballot. Okay. Challenge ballot. And if that untraceable absentee ballot has been scanned or whatever. How do I know to get Mr. Jones? I gotta challenge this because I didn't even order this thing. How does that Mr. Jones ballot that has already been open, what do we do here to make sure that this challenge ballot from a legitimate voter gets his legitimate vote in? One, or what do we do to prevent both from counting? How can, if, if, you, if you've already done the absentee and you can't trace it to <coughs> Mr. Jones, but Mr. Jones wants to challenge it, how do you know this Mr. Jones wasn't in there already? Here comes a challenge. Oh, you are legitimate in this. If that's a legitimate challenge, how does he get to cast his vote? And, and this is a whole lot of whatever that goes with it. Did he still have his absentee ballot? Did he have it with him? Did he have it at home? <coughs> Did he not get one and it just said that on the book? Right. See, those are some good right. answers so, that I can't So if the, ab if the absentee ballots are counted first, <coughs> what do you do with this challenge? It won't get counted. Just don't even bother to fill a challenge ballot out if you want a challenge. Mm, okay, no, no. Well, they need if it to. won't get counted. And I'm not making this stuff up. I got a bunch of kids. <coughs> These are real people coming to me with things. And is am I in twilight zone or does that make sense to anybody else? What are you going to do? Uh, if that's the reason we have challenge ballots is wait a minute something was wrong with this ballot in my opinion there's two floating ballots out out here this one can't be traced come on in come on in what will happen in that situation is that uh, mr john mm -hmm. uh, uh, has uh, purportedly done an absentee ballot request. Or not. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah. He purportedly has. Mm -hmm. okay, and he's also voted a challenge ballot. If, you know, uh, uh, you know they, they go through the absentee ballots, all right, and they see an absentee ballot form uh, uh, or, or you know, envelope that has Mr. Jones's name on it, has a notary on it, all right, because that's the only way it gets counted. You don't... You know, that the secrecy ballot, you know, you, you, they, get, they get the affidavit envelope. They look at it. They make sure everything's correct. Mm. They open it up. There's a secrecy ballot. They open up that secrecy ballot and run it through the machine because you're entitled to a secret ballot in the Chinese right. nation. And so they're all commingled. So untraceable. Untraceable. That's the way it's supposed to be. Mm. But Mr. Jones comes in and he votes a, a challenge ballot. He says, I don't know how I got this absentee ballot. Okay. He fills out a form. That is challenge ballot. challenge ballot. That will not be counted. Well, this is the deal. All right. <coughs> they'll look. They'll look at that. You know that that challenge. They'll go back and they'll find Mr. Jones is absentee, and they will look at it. And if the absentee, uh, the signatures don't match, or there's something fishy about it, it you know, the, the, it it. You can kick it back back out of the vote counter. Well, it, it goes into what we call mathematical. Uh, if, if, if there's enough problems in there that turns election into a mathematical uncertainty, you know, because we don't know. Votes have been commingled. But there are safeguards to, to, uh, to, to benefit Mr. Jones, to look after Mr. Jones, that when he, you know, that, that, uh, the, the check is challenged ballot against his absentee ballot. Okay? That's, 
Yeah. Just, because because you submit, yeah, just because you submit the challenge ballot does not mean that it, I think it's counted. The, it's going whole, to be, like he said. You know, um, the whole, my whole questions come from, you know, different situations that come up. You know, I guess I've got some calls that said, Sean, I didn't fill out an absentee request ballot form, and they got me absentee. And all of these complications here. Now, what we just talked about, I heard challenge ballot wouldn't be counted, and challenge ballot, this is untraceable. To me, I, even Todd got up, I still see two, two ballots that's in limbo there. And it really concerns me that is this a new thing where we're going to start opening absentee ballots uh, May the 28th, four days before the, is that a new thing? No. Have you always done that? <coughs> well, since we went to this act right here. Okay. All right. So, I mean, that still concerns me. That. Okay. The, the, so we're counting the absentees first. Oh, we are, we are no, no opening, counting. verifying, scanning. That is not counting. But once you put them in a... They are going through a high-speed scanner. It does not count them. It don't count them, but it's lost, though, right? Not traceable? What do you mean it's not traceable? Once you traceable? open it and put it somewhere... Okay. Wait, let me finish. Once you open it... That's a that's a ballot that we don't know whose it is now, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. And then we have challenge ballots come through. I just don't know how we retrieve that information back. You can't. Then you a can't. while ago you said the challenge ballot wouldn't count. If you're if, you're okay. <laughs> okay. Let's let's absentee ballots. Mm -hmm go through the commission we have a process we put them in batches of 50 okay. then that is goes through there is a barcode on the mailing envelope that comes back to us that barcode is scanned that is unique to that voter so <clears throat> once that's scanned it gives that voter, we verify, yes, this voter did apply for an absentee. Gives them the credit that their ballot has come back. Voter credit. Voter credit. Once that is done, then they are, the outer envelope is opened, the affidavit is verified that it has been properly filled out, signed by the voter, and the notary has witnessed, you know, done it, their notary on there, has the seal, um, has their notaries not expired. Let me ask you this, are you checking <coughs> now on these, the, the addresses, when you're doing all of this checking, you still got the floor. you're making sure that every one of those addresses are complete at this point, right? Yeah, no. There's but nothing on those that says an incomplete or a complete address. Those are printed labels from our office. All right. I, you know, and I know there's good folks down there. You guys are good folk. I hope, I hope this is obvious to a whole lot of people that for sure, lots of you have said, we got to look at this. Um, I, I still don't understand a lot of it. Um, but... Um, I think whenever sure. it comes down, the credit that that is scanned, mm -hmm. we can't give a voter two credits. We can't give a voter a credit for an absentee and credit for a challenge ballot. I, th I think okay. probably not worried about the credit so much as if they're just worried about if their vote, who they wanted to vote for. I understand. So, thank you. As long we as they vote one that. time. Yes. That's and that's that's what that's all we ask. Councillor uh, Vasquez. Okay. Anybody else? Question. Yes, Councillor uh, Lay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and so some of this has been brought up 
an issue of these mathematical uncertainty elections that none of us like to see. Right. We know these things are close and they're tight sometimes, and, and that's kind of a good thing, maybe. But one, one of the things that folks have asked me is, when you all start doing, I think maybe you've answered that, when you all start doing counting the absentee ballots, they're not tabulated, I believe is the term that you use. Is there any way that anybody, any of you, or any anyone could ever know what the uh, tabulations are before election, before walk-in election day? No, there is And how, how are we assured of that? Because can, it's the way our system works. Well, I, I understand what you're telling me, but prove it to me. Okay. The, abs the absentee ballots are verified. They are removed. Uh, the secrecy envelopes are sent to the next station. At that station... All of those the secrecy envelopes are kept. Everything is kept. Everything yeah. is kept in, in a, an order. Now, granted, they're in batches of 50. There is no way that we can tell how those 50 individuals voted because we don't vote, we don't open the secrecy envelope <coughs> until the next stage. Once they're taken out of the secrecy envelope, then they are put in their batches and they are set on the high-speed scanner. I scan them and that information is just scanning the ballots, yes, it is looking at where the people voted, you know, where they marked on that ballot. But I have to then in turn put all of that information on what's called a mobile ballot box. <clears throat> that mobile ballot box is then retrieved after I have done all of the absentees. Then it is fed into my election computer, and that election computer then extracts that into a, a, my software that's called Tally. This is where we tally the information off the MBB. Each voting device has a mobile ballot box in it, and as you feed through at the precincts, that information is stored on this little square, looks like a credit card. That little credit card is then in, inserted into mine. It extracts it and it puts the totals and it keeps adding them in. So there's no way I can't print totals from there. The only way I can do it is to pull it out once I have everything on it, feed it into my tally database, and it extracts it. Is that extraction done daily? No. It is done one time after 7 p.m. on election night. Election night. Yes. yes. And, and so that's how you're able to say that not even you knows what the total is. Correct. And are there watchers during this process? Yes, we do have watchers. Yes. That's one thing I didn't see in the, in the uh, information. Yes. Was the watchers for the... Would they um, watch all day long or what? They can watch day? all day. Oh, yeah. They can watch however long they want. We, you as, as candidates, have the option to have abs uh, watchers for absentee verification. You have watchers that for that um, early walk-in, and you can have watchers at precincts. Mm -hmm. okay. when, you, so. when you extract the data, then it goes into your computer, or the election commission computer. Yes. And then... So nobody's able to tie into that computer after that fact? Correct. It is not mm -hmm. internet connected. <laughs> and so can you key into it for anyone in the office? I am the only one that can get into it. So. And, and you know my next question. So. What's that? Okay. So you, you could, if you wanted to, Know the tally? No. <laughs> there is a record on there that shows every time that I log in and what I logged in to do. Okay. Will that record be available to the public? I don't know. I've never had that request. Will that record be available to the public? There's an allegation of fraud in the election process. There no, no, no. Process. I'm not allegating any fraud. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
you know, uh, if, if, if there is. this on the up and up. You bet. Yep. You know, so, I mean, you that, know. That should be available with, with or without allegations. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> but there, we have a Freedom of Information Act. That that any, that and, any and Cherokee let me talk to you do. about the Freedom of Information Act. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if we have a report, but I think the last one said that CMB couldn't tap, uh, tabulate data. CMB tabulates everything in the world over there. So I don't know that our Freedom of Information Act is working all that great. Just between you and me, and the public. I, I think it is. <laughs> but, uh, well, I venture to okay. disagree with you. And so I want to make sure that nobody knows what the numbers are before election night at 7 p.m. And, and that's what I'm trying to make sure. Of. And that's the only thing I'm getting at. You're, you're exactly right. Um, the precincts can't do their tally reports until after 7. We, uh, I won't do any before 7 because it's just unethical. It is, it's very specialized software. I mean, the thing that she's talking about, the MBB, can only be fed into a reader that is very specific to that. And, um, yeah. And that, that's what we're looking for, yeah. the, the security. Yeah. It is very high secure. I was amazed the first time I seen it, yes. Thank you. Yeah, and, and you know, Connie, I'm, I'm glad somebody there could get into it if they had to. <laughs> Uh, because when you monitor or look at the state elections, county elections, United States president elections, look what they go through and all the exactly. questions and all the accusations. Uh, we've come a long ways uh, uh, in our elections here. And uh, I've been elected several times under you guys, so I'm not going to grab a whole lot. <laughs> this, this, same, this same group here. Has, has followed the same policy that you have in place now, and, and we're all here. Uh, or I'd have a bunch of gripes. I think if I was sitting in the audience and I failed 0 for 4, but uh, right now it's not bad. It may not be love, but it's not bad. Chief, <laughs> Councilor Walkinson. Chief, I came through the hard way. Yours was a little easier. I don't know if it was or not. I mean, <laughs> I think we all had the ante up, and when that ball's thrown up, it's, it's a free-for-all. Okay, Councilor Walkinson. Thanks, Chief. Uh, we got to keep moving now, okay? Let's go. I'm not, not real fast. The uh, the early voters in the early voting period, mm -hmm. those uh, will, will those be identified and distributed to the candidates in the race? In the early well, voting. I'm I'm not understanding your question. I guess the uh, the folks that vote in the early voting. Early. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys will identify them. Will that identification list be distributed or will candidates have access to those folks that voted early so you're wanting like a voter history of who has come in early and voted on each of the early walk-in days that is a requestable report okay all right on a daily basis okay all right uh, the next thing is is on the absentee ballot since January 7th is the first day to receive uh, you guys start receiving absentee ballots. Um, can we turn in ballots that were filled out uh, a month prior to January 7th? Uh, there's no stipulation what and when somebody fills one out. We just have the one stipulation of when we can That's start we accepting can them. It. So if I start, so if I had absentee ballots filled out for the last year, and I just want to turn a bunch of them in on the January 7th. You guys will accept those on January 7th. We, yes. Yep. We did. The, the request. Yeah, uh -huh. that's what we said. Mr. Speaker, just a, a clarification. They're not ballots, they're ballot requests. Everybody ballot knows what he's talking about, Keith. My, my, sure. My, my apologies. A ballot request. Words mean things, though. Not necessarily. Now, um, so when I was at the election commission meeting there, um, Two months ago, uh, your your counsel, your legal counsel, uh, Mr. Chafin, his his uh, opinion of it was that the ballots that were dated they had to be dated on January seventh and moving forward. Is that correct, Mr. Chafin? I don't believe so. 
The ballot request had to be dated January the 7th? Yeah, in four words. <laughs> now remember the, the election law <coughs> sets the date that the commission will accept absentee ballots. Right. Request forms. But it doesn't set a date that they have to be dated. Mm -hmm. So as my opinion it still is under the existing law <coughs> that you could date one in December and turn it in January 7th and it would be a valid request that was mailed to That's under the existing law as it stands now. Okay. You all have talked about wanting to change it and that's certainly something that's a priority for the council. What's, what's the purpose of having a date if we're going to uh, start turning them in or get them, getting them filled out a year prior to? Date's not required. Date's not required. Well, there wouldn't there wouldn't be the reason there wouldn't be any any reason really. It wouldn't have to have a date, except that the uh, uh, the commission has a form that says the date that is sent. They want to know what date it was dated. If it was dated prior to the last election, then we probably wouldn't send them one because that would have been applicable to the last election. So the, the election that took place in the uh, the, the recent election, the District 7? Correct. Uh, well, those, so those forms won't be valid for uh, this general election? No, they will have to file another one, they won't. for this general election then. Okay. Um, my, <coughs> my next question is, is uh, on the absentee request form, if uh, we guys receive, would you guys accept a, a picture of a signature as an electronic signature for an absentee ballot? Uh, yes, we will accept a copy or an electronic copy of a handwritten signature. We will not accept a facsimile signature. Yeah. Uh, that came up a couple of elections ago and, uh, and in fact the law changed, the council changed the law. Uh, previously it just said signature. And there was a question of whether or not that allowed a facsimile signature. The council changed the law, 16 I think, to require a handwritten Hand signature on the ballots. But we do accept, you know, you can take the application, scan it, email it to us, uh, fax it to us. Does it have to be on a sec if So if you, get, if you have a, 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 a picture of a signature and then you have the absentee ballot, you just, just, just mail both the absentee ballot and the uh, electronic signature into you guys? Well, you can, no. We'll only accept the, the, the signature copy on an absentee by the request. But what the, I'm saying is, what if what if someone filled out the absentee ballot? The absentee okay. ballot's got to have original signature notarized by a notary. The absentee request form does? No. Yeah. no. I, I, I'm, I'm talking about the request form. I, I apologize. Okay. I'm talking about request here. Sorry. The request form, we will accept a copy of, the, of a handwritten signature. Okay. It could be fax, email, or just drop by the office. But we will not accept the <coughs> fax assembly signature, if you know what I mean. Yes. Uh, the computer writes the signature. The computer writes it, yes sir. <laughs> we will not accept that. Okay, yeah. <coughs> you good? Uh, yes, sir. Yep. Yes, Councillor Duncan. I was just going to mention to uh, Councilman Walking Sticks inquiry, um, on that request form, there's a checkbox date of what election you're actually Requesting a ballot for so, or this yes. gen, district seven special election, for example, it says I'm requesting a ballot for the district seven, election. and the next one will say 2019 general election. That's true. That's correct. <coughs> okay, thank you for that. But the same token, we can, we will sometimes get forms that are not on our form. The law as it exists now allow you to describe out that you want a ballot. If we get that, they may not say which one it's for, but if it's after the seven and have enough information for us to know what district they're in, then we will send them a ballot for that district that they're registered in. Okay, 
Councillor uh, Dobbins. Yeah, thank you, Speaker. <laughs> um, Harvey, say hypothetically, uh, in an election campaign, the election commission receives 80 absentee requests to one address. Just hypothetically. What would the election commission, what would be their, how would you respond? How would they respond to that? We've had that before. We haven't had 80, but we've had several to one address mm -hmm. before. And in those cases, we have turned that over to the uh, attorney general for investigation. Okay. What, what would and, be the penalty for someone to have 80 absentee requests mailed to one address? Well, there address? wouldn't be any penalty for having them mailed there. The penalty would be if someone forged their names or change the address as happened in the past. If they changed the address after they got the ballot or after they got the form to put their address on there. We even had some in the past where the address was whited out and they wrote in their own address. And uh, in fact, that was in, uh, in your district, I think. Yes, it was not <laughs> hypothetical. <laughs> <laughs> so we turned all the, we turned those over to the district attorney. <coughs> Or not the district, the, I understand. the attorney general, and yeah. uh, they did an investigation. So if a, and a, and a candidate uses whiteout to put their address on it, I mean, is that subject to some kind of charges, sanctions? Is that, that you just kind of be subject to criminal penalties? Was that pursued? AG felt that it was uh, it was prosecutable. That'd be the AG's decision at that time. We have no authority to file criminal charges, but we have to turn to the AG and then the AG to be in his discretion what to do about it. And if, if I'm correct, Harvey, in, in that particular instance, you try to notify the voters, hey, is this where you actually want <laughs> to send the ballot? When we find something like that, we try to call the voters and say, did you really want it? Or did you really want this sent? And if they tell us where they want it, we'll send it to the party they want to send it. A lot of times we cannot reach those Voters, right, and then you just send it out to that that uh, faulty address to a candidate. <coughs> then if they want to challenge it, excuse yes. me. Another thing that, that, that's something that council will want to look at in the future, uh, there's no restriction at this point in time in the election code of the voter requesting that the ballot be sent to the address of a candidate. Under the election code now, the voter has the right to decide where they want to censor. And uh, we have to follow that. If we see anything that looks suspicious, that's when we turn to the tenure general for investigation. Okay, when you see something suspicious. Uh, <laughs> uh, can, can the election commission internally say, we're not going to change the election code, but just internally say, okay, if we get more than... 20 ballots going to one address. We're going to act on it. Now, you're not going to change, we're not changing the election, just internally within the election commission. Would you not have the ability to do that? Uh, we don't have the ability to decide not to send the ballots or to send them to a different address. We have the ability to refer it to the Attorney General for action. The law now says that we have to send the ballot to the address voter request on their absentee ballot request form. I, I guess if we could somehow s simulate the state election law where, hey, if we get more than 10 to a particular address, then we turn it over to DA or the election board. Once again, a, a solid number, the election commission would have some specificity. Okay, we got 20 now. Now we're going to go to the AG's office. Well, actually, if we have, if we have, uh, Ten, I think the last one time we had like seven or eight return them over. Uh, but if we had ten, I feel, feel pretty sure we would definitely turn them over to the AG's office. And maybe even fewer than that. Okay. Hmm. So okay. uh, you good? Not not quite. Uh, if they if 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 there's a whiteout being used, just changing the address, is that <coughs> reportable to federal authorities, mail fraud? Is that that inter is that would that even be election interference when someone does that? Uh, I doubt it would be a mail fraud or a federal offense, but it could well be a, a violation of Turkey nation election. 
How can you tell if it's mayonnaise or white out if it's legal to turn it in on a napkin? Excuse me. Come in. It is legal if it's in writing. You can turn it in on a piece of toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> so, <great>. prosecute. <laughs> uh, is there any, in closing, go ahead. Uh, you know, they're very creative people involved in Cherokee elections. Very creative. Uh, can that can you, you mentioned about honoring absentee requests? If you have an individual that might have 500 absentee requests from a, an election four years ago, just change the date. And turn in those. Is that permissible to just turn in absentee requests that may be years old? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If they change the date. Does they change the information on the ballot? Don't you the dates? On the requests, are you talking about the requests? Yeah, oh, sorry. Absentee requests. Yeah, you guys are getting creative over there. Yeah. <laughs> no, on the request, there, the date has changed. I mean, it's the date of the election. Is that what you're saying? You're all the same. I'm just asking if they if, that's did, if they can change the date on absentee ballot request. That's the question. Yeah, if I've got and, an and it can be done, but from four years ago, <laughs> and I just want to change the dates here, election commission. You just want to mark it out? Yeah, change it. Uh, <coughs> I would say that that, uh, that the, the form that they're using, it wouldn't be our current form, and it would be mm -hmm. suspicious to us yes. if they had a date that was years mm -hmm. ago that they had marked out. Mm -hmm. Especially, I would say, if we had a, a number of them. We have had one to two here and there that have been on an old mm -hmm. form. On that the was 2017. Just marked, that was just marked out and written the current. Yeah. <laughs> but just as as that being said, we get just today we got a voter registration from when we had nine districts. Mm -hmm. So you've got to realize that people will find these blank forms out there, and they're going to use them. If they if they can't find the most current one, they're going to use them, <coughs> and they're going to send them to us. And we have received. The 2017 a couple where they marked out the 2017 and wrote 2019 how much of a change is there from the uh, the request for absentee ballot in district 7 race compared to this general election Very coming little up? change the just the dates dates, dates. It's basically the same yeah, you form. might want to tweak it just a little bit it's like using the same thunder ticket every, every <laughs> year you may want to tweak it just a little well, bit. Maybe you, you have one of our Cherokee uh, interpreters write something in there, and then, then we'll we'll really get serious you about know, it's, the election. It's like our voter registration forms. We yes. went from five to <coughs> nine to yeah. fourteen. You know, those are okay. Mr. Chairman, if uh, I may, I would like to uh, mention something. There's a lot of questions about the absentee ballot process and the challenge ballot process. Uh, one, the election code requires that after we've counted all the other ballots that we then count the challenge ballots. So the code itself says the last thing you do is count the challenge ballots. The absentee ballot process, I don't know if any of you all thought, but if back a month or so ago, uh, we prepared, the Election Commission prepared a very detailed two or three page handwritten explanation of the absentee ballot process step by step from the time we pick them up at the post office so we open them, review them, put them in the vault and uh, there is significant security. One, the marshals are always there also watching. The marshals accompany a commissioner, a commissioner and a staff member have to go to the post office. Marshals accompany them, they come back any time when the ballots are worked or you do the, the envelopes and, and, and the ballots, they're all put in one tub together and they're put into the vault every night, every day. To get in the vault, you have to have a commissioner has to sign the log and a staff member has to sign the log. And there's cameras that watch who goes into the vault, who, and there's a camera inside the vault. And those cameras record 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I think uh, they reset whatever seven days. Seven days. Seven days. There were seven days. Than that. So there's a seven-day film that covers that entire um, 
absentee ballot counting process in and out of the vault. Uh, so there's a, a lot of security, and the, and the watchers are there also. And they they get if they want to, they get to go to the post office with them. Sometimes yeah, they, they do. Take them. They did. And, uh, and but the whole process is watched by watchers also. Okay, thank you for that, so Council Vasquez. Is, is, is double and triple layered. Okay, you still have questions? Yes, I have a question for the AG. Okay, Mr. AG. One other thing, what I would, what I would suggest, if, if you all don't have that, uh, if, if you would like, we can email to your email address a copy of that explanation of that process. Okay. Would you please? Yes. Just mail it to Gail or Shelley and... I think you have that, don't you? I do. Okay, thank you. A very detailed explanation of the step-by-step -step process and all the security involved. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mr. AG, have you received such requests? We were talking about a bunch of absentees being sent to a particular address. Have you received uh, from the Election Commission such a referral in the past? Yes, I have. Can you tell us who, who would involve? Well, it was candidates from uh, uh, Mr. Dobbins' uh, election. Uh, the uh, um, you know, it's not a, uh, um, I guess, uh, not confidential. The, the candidate was, was uh, an unsuccessful candidate, Linda Sachs, for, for this, uh, uh, this position. Uh, we, you know, we investigated it. Uh, I will not tell you the, uh, what all went into the investigation. I will tell you that uh, the decision internally of the uh, Attorney General's office was not to pursue criminal charges. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, just real quick. Wait, let's give everybody a chance okay. first before we repeat. We good over here? Over here? All right, you're back up. Let's try to yeah, move it on. I we find it hard to believe when you name names. I mean, I mentioned my dad's name one day and got hammered. It's hard to believe that that's, uh, you know, how many times have we witnessed? Better watch out. We can't discuss that here, but I can't believe that. But now the. The 80, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to venture, that's 10 for sure. That's not uncommon common at all, right? Same mailbox. It's uncommon. 10? Yeah. I mean, it's not uncommon you would have that in an election. Right. It's uncommon but, you'd have more than one that went to 10. But 10... Sent to sent, 10 sent to a P.O. box or to one of my buddies that's going around harvesting these things. 10 is an uncommon thing. I'm not going to mention any names, but I know people who are paid to go get these. I don't recall that we had 10 in the last, <coughs> in the last, we did uh, last, we last district. We didn't even have five. Absentee three. request forms. To the same address now. Hmm. We did in the 2017 mm -hmm. election. Yeah. Hmm. How are they doing and that? They may well have in the 19 election. <laughs> hmm. huh. Okay. Thank you. All right. Hey, All right. Good. <laughs> Stick, make it short. I'm going to give you one more question. All right, Connie, he wants to ask one more question. Well, that's what I said. One question. Go. Uh, hi. So, what, what is this? I mean, what's the what's the number uh, that that causes suspicion on adding or to send all the absentee requests to one address? Like, what's the like what's the limit to you guys? Like, this is suspicious. Ten starts the inquisition. You find, you know, if you start seeing multiples that are going to the same address, different names, but same address, when you get to 10, you're pretty much concerned. It's not uncommon to have a family, a family to have um, five, yeah. seven. 
two um, to three generations and kids. Mm -hmm. You know. I, so. What uh, what year did you come on the election commission? Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, big. Good. All right. Good report. Thank you. Tax commission. <coughs> Sharon Swepston. Don't depose her. She's usually got good news. <laughs> afternoon. Good afternoon. I believe you do have my report. I'll try to answer any questions that you might have. <laughs> okay. Any questions for our tax commission? Councilor Watkins did. What's the what's the numbers looking like for the car tags for the schools? And Pardon me now? The, the excise tax for the schools, what's, what's the numbers look like? Um, I haven't seen those. I have to wait until finance gives them to me from audit because okay. we, we wait until we get the audited numbers have, back. Have you seen a, an increase of car tax sales? In the About, it's between years? 8 and 10 percent every year. So All right. from, from my reports, it's about, I think, uh, well, the last report you got through, right there, I started to say, <laughs> it's between 8 and 10 percent. So. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Thanks. Good. Anybody okay, else? Quick. Yes. Um, all right. The at-large tags. Um, where does the money go? I mean, do they? Does the, do the districts <laughs> divide that up? I, I don't care. I love it. No. The majority of the money, yeah, the money of course, goes back to the state. The state. Okay. We get a very small Bob. amount because we give a ten percent discount okay. to the citizen, right. and so we we get very little. In fact, it probably doesn't even cover the cost. I so. wanted to hear it from you because I mean I, I knew that. <laughs> Probably yeah, it's a very small amount that we get on the at-large. The majority of it goes back to the state. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, we good? Good reports. Oh, yes, Councilor. Sharon, I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, on the at-large, this one I was just talking about, how much are the car tags discounted to the Cherokee citizens? Who Ten percent. Ten percent of what it would have been. Ten percent of what the state charges. Of what the state charges. Right. I, I appreciate that. I want to make sure I remember that. Thank you. Uh -huh. Well, I appreciate your tag office in Cherokee now. I just bought me a tag, and I would hate to go on to the state. <laughs> appreciate you. Good report. Thank you. Self-governance, Karen Ketcher. I haven't seen her in a while. Is she here? Yep. <laughs> so the government, you're doing all right with the government being shut down, so we're good? It's open again. <laughs> Till the 15th you know, for Cherokees, the government's mostly been shut down most of our lives anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, the government is back open, as you all know, until the 15th, and hopefully we'll, we'll get a budget then. <laughs> okay, good. Have, got my fingers crossed anyway. Okay, any questions for, yes, Councilor? I have one, and I'll try and keep it brief. It's from your report under the BIA Housing Improvement program mm -hmm. and I'm curious um, how that works did we identify 18 individuals from our own tribe yes we well, the person that is identified here that works for the housing authority that works on the hip program he comes up with a list of people that are he believes eligible for the hip program the neediest of the of right. the needy and then that report is sent to BIA. And then once it gets to BIA, they go through and rank them according to whether their disabilities, their age, all of that. Once that's done, then it go, then that that report goes to DC and it's they're compiled across the nation. And then they come up with the neediest of the needy that uh, who they will choose to serve. Yes. Okay. And I'm a little bit confused on this. We we were um, authorized to do two projects. Correct? Yes. And did we, we served one and another passed away before they were served? Explain that last sentence to okay. me um, and in how the, we're going to In the it. previous year, they didn't get those houses completed, the ones that they had been approved for the year before. Say that there were four people on the list the year before. Okay. And so they didn't all, the projects didn't get completed in physical year 17, so they rolled over into 18. But two of the pe two of those people, one passed away and then one moved into uh, replacement, replacement home. home. Yeah. And then we, we have, I don't, we haven't started the two that we were approved for this year. Okay, so we're actually talking about four 
Thank you. Sorry. I just, I would, well, I was just confused, so that's all I have. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Gaming Commission, Jamie Humminbird. Good afternoon. In addition to the report that I uh, hope is in your packets, I uh, do have a few things that I wanted to tag along uh, to, to, uh, to that report. Uh, first is um, the uh, Gaming Commission meeting uh, that is scheduled for Friday has been moved in location. We are going to now have it at the golf course at Catoosa. Uh, Casino 4, which is the rebuild of uh, the, uh, the old sprung structure at the Hard Rock facility is slated to open Friday, and we wanted to have the uh, commissioners an opportunity to go through and look at it uh, to, uh, to showcase that new facility. Uh, we will be starting at the usual time at 930, but we will be meeting at the Augusta Room at the golf course at Catoosa. Um, on casino updates, uh, the Tahlequah facility is on schedule, on, on time, knock on wood. Uh, we will be able to get that one open up on schedule. Uh, everything's looking good there. <coughs> the FY 2018 audits were received early this week, at the beginning of this week, and we filed those with the NIGC as well as with the state. So we are now compliant with both federal law and the travel state compact. Uh, and finally, uh, one of the things that I, I kind of keep tabs on from time to time just to check, see where we are in terms of how uh, tribes have impacted the state through the compact. In looking at the, uh, the latest reports off of the uh, state website, we are on pace by April to mark $1.5 billion in contributions under the kit. Now, this is, this is all tribes across the state over the course of the lifetime of the compacts, but $1.5 billion is something that is uh, not easily dismissed when you talk about the impact that tribes have on the state through gaming. And so uh, it's, a, it's a good fact, and you can tell by the numbers that are reported in my monthly report that our facilities are running strong and uh, everything is looking good. So with that, I'll take any questions you might have. Any questions for our gaming commission? You guys are doing a good job. Uh, we saw the expansion yesterday at our CMB board meeting. It's uh, very impressive. It is. Uh, the, uh, Collective staff from CNE, CMB, and the Gaming Commission staff have worked a lot of long hours. Uh, it's not not without its challenges, but our, our team are, are consummate professionals. I, I have every confidence in the world, and they'll get this thing done on time. Yeah. Okay. Good report. Thank you very much. Human Resources, Dr. Nason Morton. Good afternoon. Hi. I've submitted a written report, and this month we're basically doing is a combination of New Year's resolution and spring cleaning. <laughs> kind of just getting ready for what projects to do for the rest of the year and just make sure if I have a project, I'm closing it out. Uh, if anyone has any questions. Um, <clears throat> any questions for Dr. Morton here? Thank you very much. You did good. Okay. Uh, new biz, old business, none, new business. Councillor Duncan, would you take that? Yes, uh, a resolution confirming the reappointment of Fan E. Robinson as a commissioner of the Cherokee Nation Tax Commission. I put that in the form of a motion. Second. I got a motion and a second. Is Miss Robertson here? God bless you, please. <laughs> Eat off sea, would you? Off sea, one. Okay. Uh, you don't have any questions. Uh, yes, got a, a I'd like question. I'd like to be added as a sponsor, please. Okay. okay. Uh, sponsors, hold up your hand. Okay, sound like we're all good. No. Yeah. Okay, I don't think you have to give a speech, man. So, uh, <laughs> got a motion and second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, ayes have it. Well, don't we appreciate you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs>
This is a resolution confirming on the of Dr. Jones. Councillor Baker Shaw, you want to take that? Yes, it's a resolution confirming the nomination of Dr. Stephen Jones as a board member of Cherokee Nation Health Partners, and I put that in the form of a motion. Second. Got a motion and a second in discussion. Dr. Jones is here. Um, questions? Okay, you're doing a good job. So, <laughs> if none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Good job, Dr. Jones. We appreciate you. <laughs> this is a resolution confirming the reappointment of Sean Shepard. Uh, Councillor uh, Taylor, you don't take that. Uh, resolution confirming the reappointment of Sean Shepard as a board member of Cherokee Nation Businesses. I'll put that in the form of a motion. Okay. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Mr. Shepard is here. Councillor Watkins did. I'm going to say uh, uh, Mr. Shepard has really uh, improved a lot uh, throughout his years in uh, his experience in business and trying to further his education in the Cherokee Nation. And, you know, uh, in the past, you know, our, our, our Cherokee Nation board is, is a, it's a, it's a political pack uh, for our, our elected officials. But I will tell you that Mr. Shepard, his uh, skills are, are a lot more deeper than, than just being a, a political contributor in campaigns. But he has a skill set to diversify Cherokee Nation businesses in the Cherokee Nation. And uh, he got it as a sponsor. And he is a great asset to us in, in the future of the Cherokee Nation. So, I appreciate thank that. Thank you okay. very much. We have a motion and a second. We welcome you to this non-political entity here at Cherokee Nation. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Stay. Got one? Stay. One abstention? I'll be a sponsor, too. <laughs> yes, Councillor uh, Buell, you want to take this one? Sure. Uh, it's, this is a resolution confirming the nomination, renomination of Johnny Earp as a board member of the Economic Development Trust Authority Board and Directors. And I put that in the form of a vote. Okay. Second. Yeah. Trying to keep moving. You have a motion and a second. So we, any discussion? You got Mr. Earp here, does a fine, outstanding job in Delaware mm -hmm. County. Known him for years, and we just appreciate his contribution to the tribe. Councilor. I'd like to be added as a sponsor, please. Okay. Councilor Warner. Councilor England. Okay. All right. Any questions? All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you, Mr. Earp. You have anything to say? Honored to be in this position. I, I commend each and every one of you for the service you do for the tribal members. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Jordan, you want to take the next one? Yes, I will. This is a resolution confirming the reappointment of Marty D. Matlock as a commissioner of the Cherokee Nation Environmental Protection Commission. Got a motion. Got a motion and a I'm second. Sorry. I'd like to add, he does a great, I attend some of their meetings and he does a great job and I'd like to be added as a sponsor. Okay. Is he here? I so. Okay. Any tablet speaker? Okay. Uh, any discussion? Okay. All in favor, seeing five saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. Next, uh, Councilor Walkenstick. Speaker, um, this is a, a act amending LA 12-16 to 
Title 26, Elections of the Cherokee Nation Code. And uh, this is, uh, uh, Speaker, was it discussion only? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's discussion only. Uh, so, you want me to start it off? You got the floor. Okay, thanks, sir. So, just listening to uh, some of the tribal council members and in the election commission, uh, you know, Mr. Chafin had had told us in the last council meeting that it's up to this body, the tribal council, to change election code. But they're they're wanting direction from this body to uh, to oversee these elections, and and so they're they're open to those. Now, I kind of hit this. Uh, this isn't very in depth. I just visited visit with uh, Councilman Dobbins and kind of what he was going through in his district and some of the similar concerns in the others. But again, this is discussion only. And, and keep in mind that the date of this is the intent of it is not to go into effect this coming general election. The intent is for it to go into effect after the 2019 election, just so we can uphold the integrity of our elections. And, and so keep in mind, we're all in this together, this body, our constituents. And so we need to come up to a consensus that uh, is upholds the integrity and, and the perception is that we have uh, honest elections. So the first in Section 5, um, in the uh, section, section 5, 31, uh, under B, we got it scratched out here in a candidate must not be in violation of any of the following time of following at the time of filing that's that's uh, that's marked out um, next is a uh, see it says so the general qualification of candidate for elective office certifications and acknowledgments has raised funds and or accepted in-kind contributions in excess of $1,000 uh, here recently, you know, there was some, some controversy with, you know, Mr. Duncan, and, you know, he had raised over $1,000 uh, prior to filing while he's still an employee of Cherokee Nation. And so the court said, well, you know, both laws are in the election code, but they're not in the same sentence or the same structure. And, and the intent of this law was to, when a candidate raises over $1,000, that uh, they need to start reporting to the election commission, and so that, and it's good. I mean, it it, it it holds those accountable, those elected officials, or candidates accountable to the election commission. And so now this this verbiage right here is in the same structured sentence. So it has raised or accepted in kind contribu contributions in excess of a thousand dollars. Uh, the next, if you guys go to uh, section 72, um, it, it's, it, it talks about requests for absentee ballots. Uh, it says number three, the address at which you're registered to vote is added. Uh, number five, it's a handwritten signature and it's dated. Uh, number six, absentee request forms cannot be filed or filled out prior to the approved election timeline to request an absentee ballot. That's uh, kind of what we were addressing a while ago. Uh, so people can't, can't harvest absentee requests for, from a year out. But if, whenever you guys set the date for January 7th, then that's the first date that you can start uh, working absentee forms. And, and they have to be dated. Uh, number seven, address, address to which the ballot shall be mailed to. And that goes to, that addresses Councilor Dobbins with 80 ballots being mailed to one address. Um, and then under uh, say number B, or letter B, it says if more than 10 absentees ballots of, for a single election are requested to be mailed to a single mailing address, the election commission shall immediately notify the attorney general's office provided this requirement shall not apply to requests for ballots to be sent to nursing homes, uh, veteran centers, medical facilities, multi-unit housing addresses, or uniformed overseas voters or other locations authorized writing by Cherokee Nation 
Election Commission. And I think you guys, you guys already have kind of your rule of law as far as 10 is, is suspicious. But so this is, this is saying in writing, 10 is the number, you got to turn it loose to the AG's office. Um, and then number, uh, letter C under 78, a notary, a, pub, a, a notary public shall be authorized to notarize a maximum of 20 absentee ballots, affidavits for a single election. A notary public may be authorized to notarize more, more than 20 uh, with written approval of the Cherokee Nation Election Commission. The limitation required by this subsection shall not apply to notarizing ballots at a place of business um, of a notary public during the normal business hours of the notary public, provided, however, such limitations shall apply to any agency or other entity that provides voter registration services. And this is pretty much copies <coughs> the state the state law for absentees is you can't a notary can't not, not, notarize more than 20 absentee ballot affidavits in a single election and so uh, I think we I think we tighten it up a little bit where uh, it's it's not making it difficult for people to vote absentee but it does tighten some regulations up and also it gives our election commission uh, some directive of uh, moving forward in, in the future elections past 2019. Again, this is to go into effect after the 19th general election. So I open the floor to any questions or discussion or whatever. Good, good uh, yes. recommendations. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Any discussion? Councilor Taylor. I'll move to table indefinitely. Second. And a motion table, uh, second. The table indefinitely. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. 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 Okay. If you hold your hand up. Is there any session. discussion? I got something to say. Well, not when a table. Not when there's a table. Not when there's a table. Yeah. No, I had more discussion. But. Well, I did too, but. Yeah. Uh, you want to show of hands? Yes. Let's do roll call. Oh, we can do roll, roll call. call if you want. Yeah. Okay. So, what are we voting? Can I get a clarification here? Yes. So uh, a no is we're not really happy with all things absentee, election commission-wise, election system. That's what a no is saying, right? And we've got some changes to make, and that's what a no is. Okay. And in discussion, you know, we talked about this. There, we can't make any amendments to the election code right now right. the way it is. And we've talked to but the council. Uh, I would just want to know commission. what the So I asked Councillor Walkenstick to. Uh, right. But a no. Wait a minute, I've got the floor. I said, bring it to the council mm -hmm. and, and you discuss what it is you want. To. These are good recommendations. Right. But, right. but they can't be implemented anyway yeah. till. But, well, it's a couple of attorneys. Well, and we can't said discuss it either. We're getting ready to vote on the table. Okay. Okay? All right, roll call vote. I mean. Yes, sir. A no doesn't mean you're against it. It just means you don't want to discuss it today, right? Yeah. That's right. It's tabled. Yeah. It's tabled. You know, it's never coming back. It's never coming back. No, it's just not being great. Well, yeah. all it is is today. After general election, you can come and we can discuss it all week if you want. After general election. Make clarification on the yes or no. Okay. Table indefinitely. Yes. yes. We table it. Okay. You can't discuss it. Today. No, okay. it's, not an, it's not an act as it is if it's discussion only, you know. Yeah. And, when, and when I'm looking at this, you can't table something because we're brought to the table. Ain't that why we're here? It, it, we if discuss. you look at this though, at this time, there's an obvious <laughs> level of tension, anxiety, whatever you want to call it at this time. But to me, you take these good recommendations, you put a work group to, with people that are on this body now, and then when we go through the election cycle and we do the inauguration, then you take those folks, you put what this group has come up with, you take what this other group has come up with, then you move, then you move forward yeah. with an act. Sure. Yes, and you know, we had this opportunity in last election, a absolutely. But, but we didn't do it. We waited till but the we're all hour. elected officials here, right. and we're obviously going to have the, some of the same, some of the new, some of sure. us has been through more elections than others. But I do see there needs to be some things, and I mean, and, I, and these these changes, sure. you know. But you get a full picture when you take the folks that are sitting around here. Buell's been on here for before uh, before I've sat on here, 
and several of us, and then you get the new group. Sure. But anyway, okay. I guess I got to discuss it. All right. Okay. I just. That's that's why I'm here is to dis discuss things and. We're not supposed uh, to be discussing mm -hmm. this. Point of order. Now that's why I'm here is to discuss things that a council member that was elected just like me and you. Sure. And we bring it to this table and discuss it and not to want to discuss something as important as this yeah. now later I know, or anytime. I know point of order. I've done this many many times. Okay. okay? I don't, I'm not sure I'm even for Robert's rules because he's not tariff certified, but Please. I'll let you have some leeway here. <laughs> okay, all motion to table and definitely say yes. 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 Okay, all against. Aye. Aye. Okay, one, two, three, four. Speaker. Hey. Roll call. Speaker. Roll call. Roll call. Okay. Uh, Shelly. I want to say, I got a question. Well, no, we're going to do roll call. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. We're going to do roll point, call. Point of order. Speaker. Speaker. Th this, I never put this on the table. There, you, there's, there's nothing to table. No. There's nothing to table. Down. It's discussion only. Yes. I know. I never made a motion. There's nothing on the table. There's nothing on the table to be tabled. It's discussion only. Okay. Shelly? It should be. <laughs> Elena? It's, it's an it's, it is an item on the agenda, yes. so any motions can be made. Right. The table discussion. The so table discussion. Yes. Because yep. we were getting ready to get into discussion. And I, and I told Council to walk and stick how it was going to go. I said, if you don't do it for discussion, I'll let you have the floor. And you can discuss your recommendation, and we will take those. I said, if you don't do it for just discussion, so we will make a motion table, and you're not even going to get to say anything. Correct? Well, yeah. I mean, it's Okay. Safe. Now, back to the motion to table discussion. Roll okay, call. So it's discussion only. Roll call. Discussion only. Motion to table indefinitely. This discussion, discussion only. only. Yes. Item. Yes. We'll end discussion. No, no. We'll continue. Right. Ryan Warner. Yes. Bill England. No. Keith Austin. Yes. Harley Buzzard. Joe Berg. Yes. Sean Crittenden. No, I want to talk about it. <laughs> Epstein. Tan Duncan. Yes. Wanda Hatfield. Yes. Rex Jordan. Yes. Dick Lay. If we're afraid to discuss something, why are we here? I mean. Amen. Yep. He asked. Yes or no. Is that a yes or no? She's asking. That's a no vote. No vote. Mike Shambaugh. Mary Baker Shaw. No. Yes, Smith. Yes, because after the election, we'll have cooler heads <laughs> later. There you go. No matter on it. Right. 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 Her job. Okay. Okay. Any announcements? Need a motion to adjourn. I got a motion, second. We are adjourned.